Um, where's Arvind? Is he hiding? Yes. So I want to thank Arvind, who uh, uh, um, organized this uh, couple of weeks of the Expanding Horizons in Computing, uh, and, and of course, uh, um, Vinod and Yael, uh, you know, organizing this. Uh, but um, the idea here was to just sort of highlight a bunch of things uh, from across, uh, uh, across MIT. Um, and uh, there's sort of two or three events every day this week. Last week were more sort of multi-day uh, things for the most part that were more sort of, uh, you know, work, more workshoppy and boot campy type things. Um, so with that, welcome to this new building uh, and to uh, what we hope will be uh, a really vibrant place for computing across MIT. Um, and uh, I think with that, I'll get things kicked off. So I also have the um, pleasure of, of introducing Ron Rivest. And if you look around the room, you'd be like, wait, where's Ron? Is he like hiding? There's a green room. Is he hiding in the green room? Uh, ah, and there he is. <laughs> so Ron is, Ron is out on the West Coast, which means he got up very early in the morning. Uh, I, 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 I know from other things I've been doing with Ron uh, over the last few months that uh, he, he, he often gets asked to get up at four in the morning. <laughs> so that, 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 thank you, Ron, uh, for doing it yet again. Um, I think in, in, in this group, Ron probably needs no introduction whatsoever. Uh, but I did just want to reflect for a moment on uh, really the, the amazing uh, impact that Ron uh, has had on MIT. Uh, on theoretical computer science, uh, on cryptography, uh, you know, it's um, it's really uh, uh, a very uh, rare type of career to have that kind of impact in industry, in in in, in industry and in practice, and in industry research, and academic research, and education, uh, in curriculum development. Uh, Ron is one of a handful of institute professors at MIT who are recognized for their very broad impact uh, across MIT and across the world. Uh, and, you know, I think one of the things that, um, there are many things about Ron, but the one thing that always strikes me uh, is his amazing curiosity about just about every topic. <laughs> and he manages to rein himself in and only put the time into <laughs> the topics that are, you know, that, that really grasp his interest. But you know, you can, you can talk to Ron about just about anything and you start getting, you know, sort of uh, interesting and educated questions. And I just, I think of that sort of curiosity as such a quintessential MIT thing. Uh, and I think Ron really is one of the people who I think of as defining it. So with that, um, Ron, uh, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yes, okay, good. Good, I, I don't know how the sound works there. So yeah, I uh, got up early this morning. Uh, it was a regular alarm, not a fire alarm, but uh, so I don't have quite the advantage of the fire alarm, but uh, I see all of you have survived the fire. Okay, good. So I, I'm happy to provide a few introductory remarks here at the uh, inaugural conference of the Schwarzman College of Computing. It's nice to see. Uh, I guess there's two sessions today on the uh, security without trust and then trustworthy systems this afternoon. Uh, first run by Yael and uh, uh, Vinod and the second one run by uh, Adam Chapala. Uh, so uh, we'll see those today. I thought I'd start with a little story of some research thing I did. I, I, uh, Dan mentioned curiosity. So MIT recently announced, um, we're talking, this session's about trust today, right? MIT recently announced that uh, it has a license to a system for, I guess I won't mention the name of the product, uh, a system for detecting duplications between papers and uh, things that have already published on the web. You know, uh, plagiarism is the big buzzword of the day. And the question is whether any, any works produced by MIT uh, constitute plagiarism. So as you know, the RSA public key crypto system, uh, we published in 77 based on the wonderful paper by Diffie and Hellman uh, on public key, new directions in public key cryptography. Wonderful title for a paper, by the way. It's a, still a, a great title and uh, could be repeated, repeated every year. There's always new directions. Anyway, uh, that was two buildings ago, talking about the, the inaugural when we did the work uh, with RSA, that was uh, in the lab for computer science before CSAIL even, uh, over in 545 Tech Square, and Adi and Len and I had offices next to each other. And based on this paper, we got together and said, you know, can we solve this nice open problem they posed? So we, we did, we wrote, wrote a uh, paper on that, which, which uh, uh, you all may know. And then um, most recently, then there's this, this uh, license that MIT has saying, 
you know, can our papers duplicative? Uh, you know, is are they plagiarized? Are, are the, is there duplication of material of this paper on the web? So I said, you know, well, might as well try this, and why not try it on the RSA paper? So uh, we, I took the paper that was uh, published in '77, and I fed it into this system, and I said, you know, can you find uh, this paper elsewhere on the web? And it turns out, you know, I'm embarrassed to say that it's 96% duplicative. Right there's there's stuff that co covers 96% of the paper uh, elsewhere on the web, uh, and so we said, "Wait, God, now what, what what is this?" And uh, you know, it turns out our paper's been reprinted a number of times, and, and uh, so on. So maybe that it doesn't tell if the new the paper that's being found on the web is the same paper even, or by the same authors, or or uh, later even. So you know, there's all kinds of issues with this. So I, I don't think the automated tools for detecting plagiarism are going to uh, work very well yet. Uh, Anyway, in the meantime, we'll, we'll try to get the 96% up to 100% and, and uh, try, try to figure out why, why we were missing on the 4%. Uh, you know, it seems like there's 4% that's missing somehow. Anyway, so that, that's trustworthy. I mean, the whole issue is about trust. You, know, you trust the journal system to, to tell you that the paper is actually by the authors who claim they've written it and so on. So I can assure you that the paper, RSA paper was written by us. Anyway, so uh, since then, so since uh, 1977, the field has just grown and become uh, become huge. Really, uh, it's both in size and importance. Um, it's it's uh, I've got five dimensions along which it's grown. Um, and uh, first is, you know, it, it's a field where we ask questions that were not thought of before. Um, it, it's you know we we try to take a protocol, uh, an area of application, and find some new area of new, new direction and. It astonishes me how many new questions there are in this field. Every year, there's something new that says, "Yeah, can you do this? Can you do that? Can you do this other thing? Can you do this without the adversary being able to do that?" So, uh, it's, it's a field which uh, integrate. You know, every every aspect of computer science is pervaded by security questions. You know, what, what can you don't you don't want to build systems that a high school student can take down and can can uh, take apart. Uh, election integrity is the most recent area that I've been looking at, but there's lots and lots of other areas too. So asking new questions is one of them. That's area one. Number two is ask, asking, uh, setting up solid foundations. So one of the er things that I like about cryptography is the fact that uh, it's an area where theory and formalizations, crisp definitions matter. Uh, you know, trying to have clear assumptions matters. Uh, it, it's an area where you know, what do you the question of what are you talking about? What does what does this mean? Uh, matters. And so we have uh, games. We have uh, all kinds of assumptions about computational complexity and so on too. The, the field uh, is exists because it, it has clear foundations. I mean, you can talk in, a, in an informal way, a newspaper style about the, this and that, but, but if you're going to do the, the real work in security, you need to have solid foundations to say what it is you're talking about. What, what is the thing you assume the adversary can do? Third, uh, we have professional societies and conferences. The, the field has become uh, has grown tremendously. There's dozens of conferences every year. You know, students can publish papers and do publish papers in, in all of them. Um, I'm mentioning students, that's number four. Uh, we have lots and lots of students and people uh, in this area now. Hundreds of students have come through MIT, uh, written PhD theses. Uh, it's an exciting area. There's lots and lots of growth there. And finally, commercialization. There's startup companies that have spun out and uh, you know, the, the techniques that we've developed here at MIT uh, are, are happening and real systems all over the place. So those are five dimensions uh, on which the field has grown. Um, the main question remains though, you know, what can you do rigorously with clear assumptions regarding computational hardness and what and clear assumptions regarding the models of computation to provide provably secure systems and protocols. So that's, that's the field uh, at the high level. And uh, this session is devoted to talking about the most recent results. And so Yael and Vino to put that together and I'll, I'll turn it over to you guys to, uh, to give the technical presentations, but I look forward to hearing what, what's the latest. So thank you.